Uh, we are at. Oh, okay, we're at a. Types. Types. Of mappings. Of mappings. page 12. That's no excuse to speak in Arabic. Yeah. Is it? No. That's right. No, 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 no. Are you cold? No. I'm cold. Oh, goodness. Are you cold? Yeah. He's All the way. All the way. These little babies might die if they don't <laughs> get the window closed. No, no, he needs it all the way. <laughs> Better? Yeah. Better? Yes. You know, the cold will make you strong. It will toughen you up. Uh, okay. Uh, what am I at? Okay. Uh, so we're looking now at <coughs> types of Mappings. So, what exactly is a mapping? So, when I say mapping, I kind of really mean like a function. It goes from one set to another set. A simple example would be all real numbers to all real numbers. An example would be something like x to. Well, I need to put a function x cubed. So, What's the domain? Oh. All real numbers. And the range? Oh. All real numbers. So this is called the domain. And this is called the codomain. Now we'll have to define some terms now. Um, so the first definition. A mapping takes... Uh, takes elements from one set and returns elements from another set. So as a, as a picture, it looks like this. Here is an X in this set, and the mapping gives you a value in another set. In other words, it's a function, really. Just a fancy name for it. Although, you know, it gets a bit more complicated than that. Uh, but a mapping, you know, you give it an X, and it gives you a Y. So, <laughs> it's really happening here. Are you sure? You're not just saying yes to make me happy, are you? In chemistry, of course, chemistry. Although this isn't chemistry, this isn't H2O, this is X. Mm -hmm. I forgot about chemistry. Okay. Got that? No. Uh, next definition. Domain is the set of I think you did it. no but not formally not the formal definition domain is the set of elements the mapping I should really perhaps say domain of F is the set of elements the mapping F can take in other words this here is called the domain And you could probably guess what the codomain definition will be. 
is the codomain of F is the set of elements F maps to. So in other words, the codomain is here. So you might be saying, well, how is that different to the range, or what is the range then? Um, I'll explain with an example, but just to make it uh, formally, just to give it formally, um, the range of F is the set uh, of elements F returns. So, in other words, it's, you know, I'll put in brackets here, the y is, you know, the values you get back, so to speak. Now, I'll have to give an example to help explain these definitions a little bit. Okay, can I scroll down? Yeah. Yes? So, let's take a, let's take a function, we'll call it h, and h takes um, a, b, c in the domain, and it gives you back um, d, e, f, for example. And I'll draw it too. Here's the set a, b, c, and then here's the set d, e, f. So firstly, domain of h, that equals a, b, c. Codomain? of h, all that equal? E. D, E, and F. Now let me say, for example, h of a equals D. h of b equals F. h of c equals F. So a will go to D. b will go to F. And c will go to F. So here the range is just D and F, not E. Why not? Because we, we don't get it back yet. So can you see that? Can you see there's a slight difference between codomain and range? They're not exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. So this is our first example. Um, the example was will say what is the domain range and codomain and um, I gave you this information so um, the question would have been what is domain, codomain and range okay yeah Okay, can I continue? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Um, Fran, can you move it a little to the right? It's a bit off the board. Now, just a little. Sorry. Keep going. Stop. Perfect. Okay. We got that? Right. So a little bit of um, a little bit, a little bit more uh, definitions to come. In a sense, we have um, wait, just will they ask um, the definition? They have not. 
so far. They could, but I don't think they will. Okay, so we have different types of functions. Um, so the first type is called a one-to-one, -one, or just a one-one function, uh, mapping. So what that means is x1, do you know this symbol? Yeah. What is it? Yeah, yeah what's it mean? This means for all, for every. So for every x1 and x2 in the domain, and x1 does not equal x2, then f of x1 should not equal f of x2. In other words, what this means is, one value should go to one value. To put in simple English, no sharing. One value goes to one value. There's no sharing of values. This one goes here. This one goes here. Do you know what I mean by no sharing? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's called a one-to-one. -one. Selfish. Selfish function, correct. Okay, next one. Many to one mapping F. So for all X one and X two in the domain, if X one uh, does not equal X two. Do you know this symbol? Backwards E? Very good, Mishri. There exists a Y1, or uh, Y, I should just say, such that. No, do you know what? Oh, okay, yeah. So, again, I'll draw that with a picture. So what's happening here in many to one, it means something is shared. Something is shared. Yeah, like for example, if this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So here, F, C goes to G and D also goes to G. So because it's shared here, we call this a many to one. Yeah? So we've had one to one, many to one. So what do you think the next one's going to be? One to many. One to many and? Many. Yes. Okay, so now one to many. So here we have um, there's a Y1 there exists a y1 and y2 in the uh, range or codomain. So I'll say codomain. No, I'll say range. Um, and I should also say an x in the domain such that f of x equals y1 and also f of x equals y2. In other words, this one's very strange. You have an x here, a y1, a y2, 
and the x goes to y1 and it goes to y2. So this means it splits. Yeah? Can I do the last definition? Yeah. Yep. So the last one is many, many, many too many. And uh, I'll just put it simply. Um, it is boat. Um, Both many to one and one to many. So, like for example, here some values split, yes, and also some values are shared. So it shares and splits as well. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Okay, so one last thing before we look at some examples. I've done these definitions with sets, but what about with graphs? So what do the graphs look like? So I'll give you the four graphs here. I give you an example of each. So the first one I did was one to one, and then what would I do next? One to many to one, wasn't it? Many to one. Yeah. Many to one. One to, one to many, 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 and then many, many. Oh, one really? <laughs> okay. Now one to one. Uh, I'll just draw some graph here, um, like this. The way you can tell it's one to one is when you draw a horizontal line it should only meet it once what about many to one like here's an example here like a quadratic is many to one when or maybe better even a cubic so many to one means when you draw a horizontal line in some places at least it meets more than once. So here it meets three times. Okay, I know here it's only once, but it's important that it's only in some places. So here it meets uh, once, but here it's more than once, horizontally. Can you see that, yeah? Now, um, one to many are graphs who, when you draw vertical lines, they meet more than once. Um, actually I should also say here we need the vertical lines to meet only once as well and here we need the vertical lines to meet only once as well vertical yeah we need the vertical to be one but the here, I'll write it down here. Horizontal, one. Vertical, one. Here, horizontal, more than one. 
vertical one. Here, um, vertical more than one, horizontal one. And then here, you could probably guess horizontal more than one and vertical more than one. So what graph does that look like? Like something like this. Yeah, so vertical more than one, horizontal more than one. So this is how you can tell from the graph which type it is. Yeah? Yeah. I remember a question on the exam where they gave you four diagrams like this and they asked you to say what type each one is. That's actually a good question because usually you have to draw it yourself. You drew that? We'll do some examples now. Yeah. Okay. Let me just give you a graph and tell me which one it is. Quadratic. Mm -hmm. EX. One to one. Yep. Sine X. No. No. Sine X looks like this, doesn't it? So horizontally, more than one, yeah, and vertically, one. So that's many to one. Log x. Yep. And finally, x. Something. There has to be one of these. No, 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 no. Yes. Linear. Yes, it's linear. That's why you put X graph. Okay, let's have a look at some questions you have. So, um, in part one, they're sets, and in part two, uh, they're graphs. So I'll do um, I'll do one of each and then I'll let you try some. So if you want to just write down um, I'll just do the first one. So if you can just write down this question, I'm asking you to tell me what type it is. I need you to, you should draw the sets with the arrows.
Now I'm going to do it. Did you write it down? Write the question down first. Step one, write the question down. Step two, curl up into a ball. Step three, cry. That's you and your mother. <laughs> yes. Step four, don't stop crying until it's over. <laughs> Did you write this down? Yeah. Okay. Four? Yes. Yeah. Yes? Okay. Right. So what is in the domain? Um, a, B, C, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. A, mm -hmm. B, just A and B? Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the co-domain? That's why I said. Yeah. And then what's the function's name? H, is it? Yeah. So what's H of A? Okay, so there it goes there. And H of A is also X? And H of B? H of B is Z? And X. And X. Great. So, if you were to look at A, you can see it goes from one to many. So we know it's one to many at least. At least that. But also you know is that A and B they both go to X, they both share. So it looks like it's many to uh, one. Oh, okay. Like A and B both go to X. So therefore, it looks like in total it's many to many. In other words, How is it many to one? Um, both A and B go to one. You see B goes to X, and A goes to X. In other words, they share X, and also the A and B split. So this makes it many to many. Yeah? Yeah. Um, okay. And I, all the questions are going to be like this. You draw the graph, sorry, you draw the sets mm. and then decide which of the four types it is. And I made loads for you to practice. Uh, but more interesting, I think, are the graph ones here, where you have to tell from the graph which type it is. Um, so, you can tell it two ways, by drawing the graph or by using some algebra. Now, some of these you can easily tell from the graph without doing anything. Like for example, this one is linear. So if you picture the graph in your mind, it's one to one. And this one here is quadratic. So that's, um, that's not one to one, that's uh, many to one. But some, and Cossack, Cossack is, um, we did that a moment ago. It's many to one. We did sine x, Cossack is same. But some of these aren't as clear. Like for example, what about this one? 1 over 12x plus 12. So there is another way to check. I'll show you this other method for checking. Um, so what you can do is you can say let x1, you need to move, Oh, never happy. Too cold. Too sunny. No. Too bright. I don't. Not really. That's no. That's not how it's yeah, yeah, I don't. I think that's as good as it's gonna get, Mushri. All right. So the other way to check, you say let x one not equal x two. And then um, find, or I should try to say solve fx1 equals fx2. Yeah, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to see if it is um, <coughs> many to one. Because if this is true, then it means it's sharing. If you can find a value that makes it the same, two values that make it the same y value, then it means it's sharing, which means it's 
many to one. If you cannot solve this, then it means, you know, it's uh, not many to one then. Why do we solve the many to one? I think in this one I only ask you to decide if it's one to one or many to one. So if it's if it's not many to one, then it has to be one to one then. Yeah. So let me give you a simple example to show you. Uh, before I do this one, let me do a simple one first. So a simple example. Let's say fx equals x squared. We know what the answer is. What is it? Is it one to one or many to one? Many to one. Many to one. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, many to one. Yes, that's okay? Yeah. So let's see if this method works. We say x1 does not equal x2, and we have fx1 equals fx2. That means x1 squared equals x2 squared. Yeah. Uh, you could you could write this as x1 squared minus x2 squared equals zero if you wanted, and you could write that as x1 minus x2 times x1 plus x2. But I don't even think you have to go that far. Can you think of two numbers which are different, but make this true? One and yeah, one and minus one, or two and minus two. If you said x1 equals 2 and x2 equals minus 2, is this true? Yeah. yeah. So because you could solve it, you've now shown it's many to 1. It doesn't matter which numbers you find, as long as you can find, as long as you can find a single pair that are different, but solve this equation, then you've shown it's many to 1. You get the idea of this method? Yeah. yeah. This method you should use if the graph is too difficult for you to draw. Okay. Um, so I think this one, the graph is a little too difficult to draw. Sorry, where's it gone? The 12x, 1 over 12x plus 12. So let's try that one now. Okay. So x1 does not equal x2. <coughs> f of x <coughs> equals 1 over, what did I say, 12x plus 12, wasn't it? So let's test it fx1 equals fx2. Can I solve this? Let's see what we get. Okay. 1 over 12x1 plus 12 equals 1 over 12x2 plus 12. And of course, x1 should not equal minus 1 and x2 should not equal minus 1. Why not? Yeah. You get 0 here. Now, what I'll do next is I'll cross multiply. So now I get 12x2 plus 12 equals 12x1 plus 12. What can I cancel on both sides? Oh. The 12. And then I have 12x2 equals 12x1. What can I cancel now? 12. So I get x2 equals x1. So can you think of two numbers which are different but make this true? No. No, it's impossible. Isn't it impossible? Yeah. yeah. So now it has to be one to one. So it's an interesting method. Um, it depends what you prefer, the graph or algebra. But you have two ways to think about it. If you're wondering what the graph looks like, I'll draw it for you in a moment. Can you go up please? This or more? No. Cold form. Cold. Mostly cold? No. Okay, you wrote this down? Come on, for a while you could do it. Good job. What have you got today? Tea? Sugar tea. Sugar tea. Good idea.
Okay, do you have this one? Yep. Now, um, I said, I'll show you the graph. So, how many times should it meet horizontally if it's one to one? One. And vertically? Yeah, same. Uh, what was it? 12x plus 12, wasn't it? Okay. Let me just center it here. So, horizontally, it is actually once. So, if I draw a line here, once. Here, once. Here, once. Let me add in some lines. Like, for example, y equals 2. Let me just draw that in. See, it meets it once. y equals 0. That's the x-axis. It doesn't meet it at all. No. It, I know it looks like it, but the graph skips over it and under it. It doesn't meet at all. Um, what about vertical? So let's say x equals 1. Or sorry, x equals 1. Once. What about x equals um, minus, mi minus 2 or something? Yeah. Once as well. What about here? It's not going to meet there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, give me a number. 0. No, point then it's once here. Here? Zoom in here? Yeah, like, it would seem that it could be more than one, but I don't think it does. Yeah, the curve runs just to the left and the right of it. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't actually meet at minus one. In fact, minus one is forbidden because um, you can't have zero in the denominator. So this is one to one. Yeah. Um, so most of these questions you can do from a graph. However, some of them will be too difficult to do from a graph, like L. The fractions. The fractions are a bit hard, like like uh, E here, F. But some of them you can do them from your knowledge of graphs. Like uh, what about this one here? Yeah, G. It's one to one. Now, what about uh, what about H here? Now, H, you can't tell from the graph because log is what type? Just log x. Log x by itself. Yeah, which type is that? No, no, log x. Just plain log x. Yeah, plain old log x is, um, let me draw it here, it's just simple, one to one. Uh, but what about a quadratic, like x squared, what is it, um, x squared minus 35x plus 304, what type is that? A quadratic, yeah, what type is that? Oh, a quadratic by itself? Many to one. Many to one. If I... Zoom out, you can see I made two graphs. There's the quadratic there. So now the big question is okay, so then what about a log of a quadratic? A log is one to one, a quadratic is many to one. So when we put them together, what is the result? Well, you might have to use a method like this one here to figure out if it's one to one or many to one. But if you remember, earlier today we had the graph of this, I drew it earlier. It was cut, but do you remember its shape? It was one to one or many to one. I'll draw it again for you. Here it is here. In the black. It's many to one because it meets vertically once, but horizontally you can clearly see that, like for example here twice, like if I put in um, uh, y equals two, I think that should show it. See, it cuts it here and it cuts it here twice. Okay. So my point is, sometimes it's obvious from the graph, but sometimes you're going to need to do a bit of algebra to think about if it's solvable uh, to meet it twice. Yeah. Now, 
these questions, um, number one is a little too simple for the exam because you can very easily see what type it is. It's number two that's in the exam. And I've seen, the only one, again, the only one I haven't seen in the exam is L. Um, but I've seen everything else in the exam except <coughs> L. So L is the most difficult one. Okay. But basically A to K I've seen in the exam. A to, I've seen M as well actually. Yeah, A to M is what you need to be able to do for the exam, except for maybe L, but still I think it would be nice if you could do L. So these are the exam type questions. And at the end of the day, that's what you have. You have an exam to do and it's going to be these types of questions. Uh, be careful with the cubic, because um, you might think, oh a cubic that's many to one. And true, often it is. But there are some cubics like this one, that's actually one-to-one. -one. So you need to think about how can I tell the difference and how can I check which type it is. So what is different between these two graphs? This one, you know, you Doesn't matter, not the roots, no. Um, not, not to do with the roots. Nothing to do with the roots because, for example, I could draw a cubic like this that has one root and is many to one, or I could draw a cubic like this which also has one root, but is now one to one. So it's not the roots. No? I'll tell you. Yes. Can you see it? This one has two turning points. This one only has one turning point two turning points and one turning point. How do you find the turning point? In the uh, yeah. over the Which, yes, true, which is called? If the derivative equals zero. equals zero. If this has two solutions, then it means you have two turning points. If this has one solution, then it means you have one turning point, which means the one-to-one -one graph. Now do you see what I mean? We're tying stuff in from semester one and semester two. Yeah. So you may have to do revision of semester one as we're going on. Got that? Got that? Yeah. Um, do we have five or six maths hours a week? It's six, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I think um, uh, I'll make the first class on Monday a tutorial from the previous week. Do you understand? The first class on Monday mm -hmm. is a tutorial okay. of the last week, like today. How many lessons did we do today? Mm. Only one, this lesson. The last lesson was a tutorial for the last week. You understand? What do you mean, no? You know what a tutorial is, yeah? Do you? You got that? Yeah. No. Um, wait. I want you to do something for me. This man? No, Sharif? So, do you remember doing the graph of sine and cos with Roland? Like, do you remember it? That doesn't mean you didn't do it. I just want to know, do you remember it? Now you did it. 
that, is that a no or a yes? Yes. Do we need to know? That's fine, yeah, yeah. Do you remember doing it? Do you? Are you sure? Okay. How's your memory of the events? I remember watching the video. Okay, alright. Um, I would like you to watch the sine cos graph video so you can see my method for drawing the graph of this. Okay? And uh, to prove that you watched it, uh, just post a message like first or watched or lol or whatever. Okay? Yeah, whatever. I just need I just need to know tonight when I go to bed that uh, you watched it and I can sleep because otherwise I won't be able to sleep. Yeah. You don't have a YouTube account. What's wrong with you? <laughs> do you have <laughs> Do you have a Gmail account? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can use Gmail in YouTube because Google and Gmail they're the, they're the same company, so you can log in with Gmail and post the message. Because Google bought YouTube like five years ago or something like this. Did you know this? No. So Google own YouTube. Google own a lot actually. They own YouTube and uh, do they own Twitter or? No, I don't. I don't think they own Twitter. You know. Anyways, please post something so I, I know you've watched it. It can be anything. It can be a smiley face, whatever. Um, okay, we'll leave it there, and then in the next physics class, I'll take the lab books off of you, which I guess is going to be tomorrow because I don't have you for the rest of the day, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have only the other students. 